Hello to all the Meeps and Bubbles and welcome back to our Colonize Every Planetoid Let's Play, where we also use a lot of exploits and bugs if we can. Today I wanted to start off with giving the base a little bit of a contour, but it seems like the dupes really don't want to build at the moment. Also our algae is running low, so we probably have to take care of that first. The oxygen that is being produced right now is coming from this algae diffuser here in the middle of the base. Hence in order to get more algae we can, for quick term solution, dig up the algae that we find down here, which is pretty much all that is left on this planetoid. That is why we can use the teleporter unit to send one of our duplicants to the next planetoid and use this supply teleporter unit to send over algae that we can then use for oxygen production. And because I have plans for Halo, I'm going to send him over, he will need hard digging for that and advanced research to activate the supply teleporter. So before sending over the only duplicant that can actually activate that building, we need to dig towards that, activate it and then send them to the next planetoid. Now that we have prepared that, we can activate the building with a high priority. Now we only need to activate the teleporter on the other side. Also, I probably need to activate the proximity. This setting exists so the duplicants don't run far away, come back, run far away again. Instead they will take a look at what is near them and try to prioritize those tasks. But since it is already pretty late for our duplicant in this cycle, we will wait for him to take a dump, eat something, sleep and then send him over in the next cycle. Down to the right you can see that we got a new care package. The oxygen problems reduce our choice to blossom seeds and sand. Blossom seeds it is. It is time for a quick inspection of the planetoid that we will end up on. This one is called Equiol, and from the looks of it, it could be the barren moonlet, but I'm not sure. Here on the surface you can see chlorine and hydrogen and a little bit of radiation. Okay, after unpausing the game, a lot of radiation. Otherwise, nothing fancy. Without further ado, let's send over our duplicant. And don't forget to inspect all the buildings so you can get some data banks. And in order to not be alone in this desolate place, our hailer is going to defrost a friend, you could say a veteran of this place. He has been here long before everyone else. Let us welcome Wade to the base. Wade will be our jack of all trades with agriculture, strength and cuisine, as well as three skill points that we can allocate later. And now that our lovely dupes are here, they need a place to sleep. Which can be quickly done by digging out an area, closing it off with some doors, placing in two beds and to make it a little bit fancier some floor tiles. Then we can add the ladder and close off the higher ones of the two doors. Then it is snack time for the duplicants, a little bit more work and then the duplicants clearly need a toilet. Also we haven't given them a right schedule. So first we move our two duplicants to the second shift, then we make everything work slots and change out some of them for downtime and bedtime slots. And then let's hope that we get the outhouse built before the duplicants will pee on the floor again. That is one of the favorite things that I like to do. It seems that with a little bit of priority yellow, the duplicants were able to get it done. Nobody peed on the floor. Meanwhile, the duplicants on the main planetoid have built a ladder, so we can deconstruct everything that is in between and keep on going with the ladder shaft. The electric grill will be deconstructed and moved, and the same goes for the ration box up here, so that we can have everything nice and orderly. After deconstructing everything that was in the way, we can place down the electric grill again, hook it up to our grid, and then give our cook a couple of cooking orders. For example, barbecue forever, frost buns and pickled meal forever. In case you are wondering where the meat is coming from, one of the critters died for some reason. The dupes here on the second planetoid are digging their way down. Why down? Because I already scouted the area and here's the supply teleporter input that we can use to send over all this algae here to supply our main base with a little bit of oxygen. And for the duplicants to be able to reach this place we need a couple of ladders they need to dig right through the water and will probably get very wet. Up to the right you can also see that I'm digging out an area for our toilet systems. <laughs> the dupes made a mess out of this place, so we can finally activate the supply teleporter input and maybe dig down a little bit further to drop that water down, so it's not in the way anymore. Activate this with a high priority. Also set this to allow manual use, organic, algae. Now the duplicants will be able to send stuff over if we manage to get some power there, which can be easily done by just running a cable up our already existing ladder system, placing it in the floor up here so we are prepared for any future energy consumers. And since we haven't dug up any coal on this planetoid, manual generators should supply us with enough power for the base. The power will be stored in two large batteries. 
that we place anywhere where we find a little bit of space. And as for the oxygen production for this planetoid, we just smack down an oxygen diffuser somewhere. The reason for that is simple, the planetoid is very rich on algae. We can deconstruct this and press the water further to the right and then rebuild the wall right here flush with our other floors. Oh man, I forgot about this water pocket. I'm just going to manually pump that out. And then we can drop it in here. Therefore, a couple of mesh tiles will help out with the bottle emptiers later on. We have a new blueprint. Let's go with the food for now. On the second planetoid, the dupes try to get rid of the water by digging further down to the air pocket. The conveyor loader is filled up with algae. Further up in the base, the cabling is being finished. The batteries are being built and the manual generators are progressing slowly. Let us also not forget about a bathroom. I want two sinks and two laboratories. To speed up the digging process on the main planetoid, Hans Martin Diefenbacher gets harder digging. McLim also harder digging. And probably building. They all need building. Yeah. And for Skycloud, our only rancher, ranching is more important. But he will still get building. Let us also research the airflow tiles. Why the airflow tiles? Because I want an airflow shaft right here in the middle. As you may see in the background, I'm placing down a couple more floor tiles, deconstructing stuff that we don't need, in order for the base to finally get a shape. At the same time, in our second base, the dupes are still building the bathroom and they already sent over the full conveyor loader with algae. Which should mean that we have a lot of algae on the other side. No, it's just a ton. Added together, it means we are at 2.3 tons. Over at Wade's home planetoid, we are missing a couple of building materials. Metals mostly. So let's dig them up. Look at this, I totally did not notice that we sent over our only advanced researcher dupe. That is why I'm making our cook the second advanced researcher. Right now you can see me moving the mess hall. One floor lower. Why? Because I want to deconstruct our hatch ranch and move it to the left side. Because it is not a bug and it has to go to the left. To the vanilla side. Then I de and reconstruct the planter boxes for the same reason. Even though I don't have much hope for the mealwood here. The temperature is just not very forgiving. And for the next research, air systems. Because I want to build a tiny spawn. Kyle, how did you get up there? Stop peeing all over the place. Not cool. Really not cool, Kyle. On the second planetoid, it is finally time to give the bathroom the water that it deserves. Same thing as always, just a long pipe, a pump and connect it up with a cable. But this time I'm putting a liquid storage in between our pump and a bathroom. Why that? So we can have the pump run a longer time, fill up this liquid reservoir and after that in case of a power outage we have enough water that will flow without any power as an emergency backup. Meanwhile, in the main base, this space here is good for nothing, so we can place down a couple of storage bins in there. So maybe the duplicates can clean up this place a little bit, while the other dupes are building the pipes. Quick explanation again, why did I place the water storage right there? That is in order for it to function as a buffer. In case the power ever runs out, the storage will use its water to refill the bathroom. I also don't want to deal with the polluted water right now, so a second storage bin will take care of that. We just need to connect up the output from our toilets and the sinks with the help of a bridge to our liquid storage. Then we can store all the polluted water, take care of that later and deconstruct all the tiles that we don't need. New printables are available and I totally forgot to place down the mini board. Come on, wait. There you go. Uh, we need to activate this. Meanwhile, we can research for the artistic expression. Nice. Let's choose a blueprint. No more duplicates. Water. This should work. Let's go back to the main colony. <laughs> What I may have totally forgotten is that all the duplicates are sleeping on the floor. A new bedroom is overdue. I guess for now this should do. While some of the dupes may build that, we can research for the advanced power regulation. On the second planetoid, where our best researcher is, we could start a research station too. Just place down a supercomputer as well as a regular research station and hook it up to our grid. And this light producing shinebug can also help with the researching speed. 
After finishing up those tasks, our dupes are free to do something else. First deactivating the manual transport of the algae to our main planetoid. Then we can accumulate more water in our pocket down here by also digging up a little bit material here and freeing the water pocket on top. The next research will be the material science research. While the dupes were digging, the research has already been finished, so the next research will be the improved ventilation. Back to another issue on the main planetoid, I want to get rid of our stables here, because the critters are overcrowded and we have a lot of eggs in there. Therefore I'm digging up this area to the left up here, which will be our new stable area. Also I know this is wasting a lot of material, because every ice pocket that is dug up will lose half of its mass, so you will lose half of the water that is stored in every single tile. If you want to get the full value out of them, you have to melt this area. Myrth leaves. Cool. The dupes on the second are running out of food, that means more digging and better access to the plants. For example, up here. If you really want to get the water out of every single ice tile, you can just melt them. For that you can use a lot of different methods. Anything that produces heat should do the trick. You could use specific heat producing buildings, use pipes with other warm liquids or just build your heat producing machinery in the ice biome. In our case I don't really plan on melting a lot of ice, I'm just moving our cold generator from this area underneath the mess hole to the ice biome so it's not in the way anymore. But since we do not have enough refined metal to build the smart battery, I'm deconstructing the old one and using the material to place it right here in between those new coal generators. Like this. And then we can hook it up to the automation and to the power grid. There we go again. Now we can set this to 90 and 70. More research can be conducted, so we are going for the temperature modulation, because we want the insulated tiles. A quick check of the skill points tells us that Wade has 4 skill points. Hard digging, building and a head. And for Halo, Halo needs more morale points. And here you have an example of a great team working together. Yeah, those dupes. They are suffocating at the moment, because no one built the floor. And apparently there is no oxygen in this base. Yeah. I sent over enough algae to supply this base with oxygen, but the problem is that the dupes could not reach it, because there were some tiles missing here and a little bit of the abyssalite blocking the way for the dupes. Now that the duplicates have access, I placed two storage bins down here, which they can store the algae in. And now let's take care of our trapped duplicates. No digging. Just get out of there. They also don't need to build every single floor tile, just those two. Seriously, those dupes. Ooh, that was, that was a close call. <laughs> and another portion of ice. We had to address the calorie situation on the second planetoid, hence I placed down five of these planter boxes for each duplicant, which we then filled with mealwood, as always. On the main we finally have enough space to move over the ranchers, so just grab everything that was in there before, copy it over, place it down, and then copy the settings after the duplicants are finished building it. Skycloud seems a little bit sad and now instantly angry again. And now headless, what the heck? You did see that too, did you? The reason why Skycloud is so angry is because their moral requirements are not met. The plants in the Great Hall wilted, so I had to replace them with Joya seeds, but they also will not make it for long, because the temperatures are pretty low. And while all this happened on the main planetoid, on the second planetoid the dupes were digging. Meanwhile I copied over the settings from our other ranch, so we can capture the critter now and bring them over. And we even have one sage hatchling that is hiding behind here. Sage hatchlings can be useful in eating all the stuff that you don't want in your base. Mostly slime and rotten food, but also polluted dirt. How much polluted dirt have we accumulated? Only around 40 kilograms, okay that is not helpful. Maybe we just eat it. New printables and we have a hatchling. This hatch only adds to all the other hatches that are waiting to be delivered to our ranches. I even forgot one down here. But this time I'm trying to make the ranch the maximum size of 96 tiles. A ranch of that size can hold up to 8 hatches. The eggs of hatches and the hatch itself are counted the same, so make sure to get rid of the eggs. Oh, and we got a trap duplicate again. Kyle. Finally. Back at the skill points, Hans Martin will get super hard digging, McLim will be our advanced science researcher dupe, 
And Skycloud also gets hard digging. Also, now that I've shown you one of the vanilla methods of melting ice, I will show you the exploit version of heating up your rooms. Here on the exploit side, we will build a couple of these transformers. And hook them up like this. We also need to supply them with power once. There, finally. Okay, let's check this out. Connect this up to the power, but only for a short while. This too. Cut this again. Connect this up. And now, these are full and these are switching. Both is fine, but I guess this produces more heat. I'm not totally sure about this, but let's give them a little bit more power. Wait a few seconds and then cut it again. And now we can check the temperature, even though this may not tell us much, because the temperature is up for change, since we dig up and transport a lot of ice all over the base. Even though a lot of hatches still need to be caught, a couple of them already have been brought over to the new ranches. So how many are in there right now? Four of seven. For the research, the polluted oxygen is annoying me, so decontamination and deodorizers. The contouring and shaping of the base took a little bit longer than expected. But that is something that had to be done and I wanted to have it done as fast as possible, so the second episode was fine for that. As you may see in the background, I also expanded the digging orders a slight bit to the right. <laughs> Why that? Because I want our industrial areas to the right and to the left of our main base shape. While all those digging orders were happening, we also got an oxyfern seed which we can duplicate for later use. On the second planetoid that supplies our main one with a lot of algae so the duplicants can breathe, I had to add a couple more layers so the duplicants don't get idle. And also because we need all those materials later. Hence the digging and building orders down in the base and this larger area on top as well. And we also got a blueprint with a barbecue. How amazing is that? I think we want that in the main planetoid because we can combine that with one of our Patreon's wishes. Our lovely Kyle right here stated, in contrast to Ein Halo Euro, that he only wants the best life and treatment for his duplicate. I can't make that true at the moment, but I can work towards that. So for now, Kyle will get a barbecue that was an option for the printables. And when I say Kyle, I mean only Kyle. Because how else could you be the pampered dupe if everyone else is pampered as well? Kyle is overjoyed that he got the barbecue all for himself. I mean, look at his smile. And our Adrian hasn't gotten any skill points so far. Also, editing me here. When the heck did we take in Adrian and name him? Where's my clip for that? Never mind, he got building and heart digging. And the rest is fine as they are. We are slowly carving away from the iceberg on the right exploity side, while at the same time de and reconstructing our science stations to the left. But not only that, on the buggy side in the middle segment I'm placing down more of the transformers that should produce heat for our base. As you may notice in the background, I am also adding. As you may also notice, automation for the lights is added in almost every room, except for the bedroom of course. The light itself can make some duplicate actions faster and the automation helps us save on power. What you probably have missed in the background is that I built a new food storage further down in the cold ice biome. On the second planetoid and in compliance with the wishes of the patrons, I'm going to make the bedroom of our Ein Halo Yuru as bad as possible. Therefore, I let them dig towards space. So I can use the radiation and maybe this chlorine down here to make the bedroom a very unwelcoming place. And what is printed? Some duplicates and sand. I don't know what this is supposed to be, but this seems like a bug. This is not a bug in the exploit side. Go there. What you see right now has already happened in the time lapse. I moved all of the science stations to the left and now I'm automating the lights. Therefore we just need a motion sensor made out of refined metal. Place some lights anywhere near them where we want them. I want them to touch every single tile on the ground for our researching dupes to be illuminated. Then we can hook up the light bulbs to the power grid and the motion sensor with an automation cable to the light bulb. Nothing else is needed, that's all. Now the light is only on when a duplicate is in the room or passes by. Also what is printed? More hatchling eggs. We could eat those. 
back on our second planet. The dupes finally have finished this and we are losing oxygen so we can close this off now again. So let me quickly come up with the worst possible bedroom that I can think of at this moment in time. We need to make one of our duplicants a ranger, even if just for a short while. You will see why. How about you wait? Critter ranching, but only for now. Small side note for those who did not know that, you can place down a critter drop off. For critter who cannot be wrangled normally, set it to auto wrangle surplus and some dupe will take care of that. This here will not work. <laughs> to be even meaner, we need more research. Even more printables and it is grub fruit preserve or muck root. Take a look at this. You may know where this is going. So first off, those are not gates. So if this turns on, this will close instead of open. These are filter gates, both set to 5 seconds. This is a timer sensor. This turns green for 15 seconds. After 5 seconds, the second one closes. The first one closes immediately and after another 5 seconds, the last one closes. And we will use that to press up a little bit of water. Also, I place in a storage bin, so we can deconstruct it and have a nice bunch of debris lying on the ground. The dupes will not like this and that's the whole point. <laughs> and we even fed the shine bug. Oh, look what is printing, we got some larvae eggs. That is amazing, but this is way too cold on the main planetoid, so we need to go to the second one. Let's check the temperature here. Yeah, the temperature is fine. This is even more up there alley. So let's print them here. In the time the dupes were building the meanest possible bedroom, they have researched the space program and the notification systems. We can also send over a little more algae to the main planetoid. We also got the chance for a sweet larvae that we are printing on the second asteroid. I think for now this is the meanest bedroom that I can come up with. It's a ladder bed that gets smacked with a hammer every couple of seconds. There's a shine nymph in there that keeps the duplicant from sleeping. And well, once a cycle, the bedroom will get flooded. Also there's a lot of debris on the floor, so it is not the nicest bedroom. And it is slightly radiated. I think this is the meanest thing that I can come up with in this short time. So the only thing that is left to do is set this to our halo. To clean up the second planetoid, I'm placing a couple of storage bins right here. And Kyle here wanted, in contrast to ein Hale Euro, the best things. So let's check out what we can do. We could start with a better bedroom and just so the other dupes can see that he has a better bedroom, I'm doing it right next to them. He will get a couple of nice plants. We can take one out of our mess hall and replace it with another one. The debris on the floor will of course be collected and all the tiles will be replaced with granite tiles. <laughs> Macroot. They have a lot to clean here. Sweep only all no liquefiables and no polluted dirt or rot pile. And because I'm trying to integrate every wish for your duplicants, this will be a tiny recreation room where only our lovely Kyle has access to it. After we have added some decor items to it, the hanging pots in itself will count. The room has now been transformed to a recreation room. Now all that is left to do is first give it a couple of plants and then restrict the access for every other dupe except for Kyle. Isn't this a nice tiny room? Okay, enough of the shenanigans. It is time to build a quick SPOM. SPOM stands for self-powered oxygen machine or module. We start off with a little bit of insulation made out of igneous rock, a couple of copper airflow tiles to the left of that, something to drop a liquid with, and sadly, an electrolyzer also made out of copper ore because we don't have access to any gold amalgam anywhere. That means if this ever reaches 75 degrees, some of the buildings could break. Then I placed down three gas pumps, one to collect the hydrogen and two to collect the oxygen. The two oxygen pumps will be connected with a pipe. Then we can insulate the rest with more igneous rock insulation tiles. And while the dupes build that, may already prepare the pipe for the water. At the moment you see me place down a regular pipe, that was not so smart. You see me replacing that soon with an insulation pipe because the temperatures here are below zero and we don't want the water to freeze in our pipes. This is the moment where I notice. So this time I'm using an insulation pipe made out of igneous rock again. The power for the system can already be connected and I run it in the wall because it just looks cleaner. 
no other reason for that. Then in order to have a working swarm we need the self powers part of that. Hence a hydrogen generator to the left as well as a smart battery. Then everything can be encased in insulation and we probably need to produce more refined metal for the automation cables. What we also need is a gas pipe behind our hydrogen generator. We should make it out of granite because we don't have any radiant pipes at the moment. Why not like this? I think this looks nice. For the automation for now we just connect the smart battery to the hydrogen generator. And then we drop in a little bit of polluted water and then clean water. Set this to enable auto bottling and a priority of 9. Wait for the dupes. I'm not stopping this this time. I learned my lesson. Even 200 kilograms would be fine. This is at 20 kilograms now, so that is also fine. Now at 100, let's set this to water. And I forgot to hook up the power. The water just has been delivered. Now we have 68 kilogram on this tile. We can deconstruct the bottle emptier and close off the room. This time I want a little bit more automation. I want the electrolyzer to only activate when the battery really needs it. And that can be achieved by hooking up the smart battery right to the electrolyzer. Secondly, I want to be able to activate this manually. For that, we just need to connect a switch. Connecting up a switch like this automatically creates an OR gate. Or you use this one. So this automation activates the electrolyzer when the battery needs power or you press the switch. Also before we feed our gases into the generator, we want them out of the electrolyzer room. The oxygen room will also be vacuumed out. Then we supply the smart battery with power, hopefully only once, and we can just do that with a manual generator and a cable. I connected up the water and switched off the electrolyzer, but I forgot that the battery can still control the electrolyzer, so this will turn on. At least we managed to make both of these chambers a vacuum. And this made me think that I could deconstruct the gas vent. And here I notice, ah, the battery requested the electrolyzer to activate. My mistake. But at least this is now hydrogen and this is oxygen. Why did it split that way? Because hydrogen normally goes up and oxygen normally goes to the left. You can influence that by priming it with the respective element. That helps in some cases to switch this around. But normally 1 out of 50 cases the hydrogen goes on top and the oxygen goes to the left. Automatically. Our spawn had to be supplied with power again to give it another kickstart. Let's take a quick look at the gas overlay. The hydrogen and the oxygen are being transported, the hydrogen is being burned off, turned into energy and is supplying our system with power again. Once there's enough hydrogen, this works like a charm. You may have noticed the power discrepancy, we produce 800 watts but use up 840. We got 3 times 240 plus 120 watts. But the thing is, those two gas pumps only run some of the time because each electrolyzer produces 880 grams of oxygen. After that we can cut the cable, set the battery to 90 and 70, clear out the room, deconstruct the manual generator and close it off. And then we can automate the oxygen output. We can easily do that by placing atmos sensors all over the place where we also want our gas vents to go. So for example, if I want them in the right corner of every room, I place down an atmos sensor that I probably will set to around 1600 gram grab one of the vents and place it right next to each one of those atmos sensors. I was missing one. Then we can grab the gas pipe and hook it up to every single one of those gas vents. Well, technically I can only supply the right side of the base with this and our oxygen diffusers will supply the left side, but we may do that in another episode. For now, I just need a little bit of oxygen and deconstruct this gas vent. We don't need that. To finish the automation for our oxygen control, we just hook up the atmos sensor to the vents with the automation cable. Nothing more. That's it. I set them to if below 1600, then send a green signal and open the vent. And how is this controlling our oxygen? Well, since each of those singular pieces will do that, the oxygen is held back in its pipe, will stop here, and if the gas pumps are not running, they will not draw on the power. Also, what a sprinting barbecue. <laughs> Someone will be a very happy duplicate because we only have one dupe that is allowed to eat a barbecue. Kyle. What is the reason that this is on the bug and exploit side? 
Well, let me explain. We got two infinite storages here. The left one for the oxygen and the right one for the hydrogen. The oxygen is already at 10 kg. A room can be overpressured endlessly, but before that may happen, the electrolyzer will stop off-gassing. But since it is submerged in water, it will never stop, as long as it is supplied with water, which it is. So two infinite storages are clearly exploits. A small side note, the hydrogen room to the right should not be vacuumed out completely. Otherwise, you might get some oxygen and hydrogen in there. You don't want it. In order to prevent that from happening, an atmos sensor could do the trick, so that the gas pump only activates if there is enough left in there. You could also let the manual switch activate it for a longer time. The second reason where this is an exploit, every spawn that is self-powering will delete heat. The hydrogen that is used to cool this room down will be burned off and produce no further heating. So you basically delete the heat. Which makes every spawn, no matter how it works, a thermodynamic exploit. And here you can see a short moment of one of our pumps turning off because of the power discrepancy. Meanwhile the duplicants on the second planetoid got a nice little recreation room. We also researched the smart storage. More printables, we got a pilot. A destructive one. So let's get this new duplicant on this planetoid. Frankie. We will welcome Frankie to the base. I'm all out of Patreons, so no more names. Sorry guys. Frankie, welcome to the base and you will get a bed. Sadly that I deconstructed this one already. I think for only the second episode we dug out a lot of space. The bug and exploit site slowly heats up. The second planetoid that only just now has been colonized doesn't look the same. I found a couple of interesting spots and I want to find out what lies behind here and here as well as on the vanilla side here. It would be super helpful if you keep up the good work with the liking. And now you can take a look at how a typical night in our base looks for the dupe with the worst bedroom ever. Ha ha ha.